Bioneers, Bioneers, Bioneers. Today we celebrate these pioneers. So we're going to start with the winners today. I'm from IT background, so I, I'll start with the IT people. Having uh, access to the medical care anytime, anywhere. Mr. Ahmad, can you elaborate on that? Um, hello, everybody. My name is Ahmad. I'm the co-founder of HeyDoc. Uh, HeyDoc is a global health communications platform that connects patients anywhere in the world with doctors globally uh, for the purpose of non-urgent medical advice. Um, our goal is to be able to support people that are struggling with non-urgent uh, issues instead of going online and sort of doing their own research, going through medical texts and journals and then realizing they've got something more serious than what they actually have. Um, or if they just need advice on, a, on, on something that's been bothering them. Um, they can just go on the app and have a chat with a doctor. We've got doctors from El Salvador to Malaysia, um, and we've got patients all over the world enjoying uh, and hopefully continuing to enjoy our platform. So that's who we are. That's interesting. So uh, I can have a physician from any part in the world, anytime I want. Absolutely. Um, wow. The idea is when you have a, when you have a health issue, um, People usually uh, procrastinate with a lot of the issues that they struggle with, uh, especially when it's our focus, which is non-urgent uh, issues. Um, it doesn't matter where the doctor is. It do it, they don't need to be right next door or in the city uh, near you. They just have to be good doctors that can help answer the question and are available um, when you need them to be. Um, so that is, that is what we realized what our patients wanted. So we ran a pilot last week, last year, and we did a lot of testing for all of these assumptions that we had. So, um, for example, we thought people would want um, to book a physical, sort of a virtual appointment with a doctor and have a, a video call and ask them all these questions. What we realized is people don't want that. Um, they sort of um, want to have a chat with a doctor. Doesn't matter where they are, as long as they're good, um, and to help them out. That's interesting. So uh, I'd like to move from uh, IT uh, sector to engineering. We have a uh, mechanical engineer. Dr. Asma was surprised uh, to, to know that. <laughs> she, she, she thought he's a physician. Uh, the problem, uh, I think I know why she thought she's, he's a, uh, a physician. Uh, Dr. Ali Naqbi, invention is uh, artificial liver. Right, Doctor? Yes, Dr. Shakri. So it was surprised exactly. that we have a mechanical engineer who actually trying to uh, change uh, the art in the transplant. Tell us some more about your invention, Doctor. Uh, thank you, Dr. Shakri. This is um, I'm Dr. Ali Hilal Naqbi. Uh, yes, I'm a mechanical engineer or bio bio engineer uh, by training. Um, I like the idea that I'm a mechanical engineer and everyone uh, f feels or thinks that I'm a physician, but I am not. I wish I, am, or I, I was, but um, I am not. Uh, the idea came when I was studying uh, bioengineering and uh, my PhD is more or less on hemodialysis, and most of the people here know about uh, the hemodialysis. And then, and then we noticed that um, they treat uh, the liver failure patients with the hemodialysis, which is where uh, the performance of it uh, for the patient e e e cure is very minimal. And then we thought that uh, the problem was um, it, doesn't, it doesn't have uh, liver cells because liver produce more than just det detoxification. And therefore, we thought about the new design. Why, guys, you don't have a bioartificial liver is because of that. Once we put the liver cells inside the, the hemodialysis device, for example, they die within a, few, within a few minutes or a few hours. So this is why no one thought about it, to have um, a bioartificial liver um, in, the, in the beginning. And then we thought, let's have a, um, a design, a new design which will allow the... Uh, the cells to sustain in the, in the product or in the design or in the system for a longer time, like three months, four months, and especially when you want to implement them. Um, and then we faced another problem, which is the, uh, the oxygen. They consume oxygen like crazy. Um, you put oxygen as much as you, as you can, but the cells are just oxygen consumption. And therefore, we thought about uh, the problem is having the oxygenation element within the design itself, which uh, most of the designs and the um, 
um, the products or the machines have the oxygenation element outside the design or outside the, uh, the product. Whereas we thought about having a separate room uh, for oxygenation to oxygenate the cells within the product. That was the novelty of our design. This is why it was different. That's interesting, Doctor. Uh, so uh, you're going to change the game in this, uh, in this field, right? Through your uh, invention. I mean, you, you're going to change the process itself. You're going to help a lot of people uh, have the chance to live more. How do you feel about that? Uh, that's right. Actually, actually um, um, uh, one of the one of the main reasons as well is because of the waiting list and the donors. You, you don't have donors. You don't have much people who is going to donate uh, their livers or, or their kidneys. And it helped a lot to uh, sustain the patient alive until he finds um, a donor. Uh, the game has already changed. It's uh, it's not because of my de of my design, unfortunately, but it is because of the 3D printing. Um, um, if we don't if we don't really hurry up and uh, tackle the market within a few years from now, I think we will be out of the market soon. Um, uh, the market is um, dramatically changes, and the paradigm is already shifted into 3D printing a kind of uh, productivity and others. We are heading towards, towards there, and in the university, uh, we thought about it, and we are doing something very good about it. Now we are trying um, to, to push Adipoli, Abu Dhabi Polytechnic, towards into that, into that direct, uh, the universities in, 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 the whole, in the whole region um, towards the 3D printing and the fourth, uh, fourth industrial revolution kind of a project outcomes. So that's interesting, Doctor. So we have an IT person, we have an engineer. We're going to go right now to the people in the field, a physician. How you, you heard about all these advances and all these pioneers. How you, gonna, how you see uh, innovation, invention, and advance in technology going to help the treatment and the advancement of the healthcare? Um, this is a very important question, actually. I think the innovation in healthcare is a really very wide area. Um, moving from the artificial intelligence, uh, human enhancements, where it can be done in the surgeries, uh, looking into the blockchain and the impact of the blockchain in the healthcare system, uh, communications and patient engagement. Um, I think there is also another area of innovation that is very important, which is basically the uh, way we are delivering healthcare healthcare system and the IT example is really clear. Uh, there is a lot of innovation coming into how we can really deliver the care, access the patients in easier way. Um, and the area of my interest is specifically is how we can be more innovative in preventing illnesses and diseases. And this is very important because as you know, the cost of the healthcare systems are going up. Uh, it is impacting our economy for sure. We need to direct the innovations in a ways that are really reducing the overall future cost for the generations. It's not easy, but this is one of the important uh, uh, priorities that we have. So I think uh, working in Department of Health um, and being a physician, I would like to see a healthier community. And I would like to, uh, for us to adapt the best innovation, uh, technologies, uh, inventions that can help us live a better life and a healthier life. Thank you, Doctora. So we heard from all the people so, uh, in, in the game. So we have the IT uh, who drive technology to help healthcare. We have engineers who are trying to create systems that help healthcare. And we see the perspective of, of a physician about uh, how this innovation can uh, uh, change the game and uh, help uh, provide better, better treatment, better uh, health care uh, delivery. Let's talk about with an admin. She's a physician, an admin at the uh, Department of Health. Uh, how do you see these changes and these advances are crucial to, to your business? I know that you have TIP today, to supporting TIP, but what change, how you see, how you vision health uh, sectors in the, in the future. Thank you very much, Doctor. Um, specifically, I'm on the table here supporting and promoting uh, TIP 
as a platform for encouraging innovation. Uh, however, my, my real job is improving the quality of healthcare in the Emirates of Abu Dhabi. Uh, we are responsible on making sure that our patients receive the best treatment, uh, the most effective uh, 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 treatment modalities. Uh, today, if we want to give them the best, then we have to be the first the first adapter of innovators. So there is a huge advancement happening every second right now. And we would like to change, um, you know, the, perce the perception of healthcare as a consumer, uh, as, you know, adapter to be innovator, healthcare innovation, and to adapt those innovation and be in the front line. We need to be pioneering in uh, healthcare innovation. This is our vision. This is what we aim to do. And the overall benefit is huge. If we want to realize what are the outcome for the admin side, first of all, an improvement in the quality of care for our patient, a reduction and cost, because I'm going to adapt a cost-effective modalities that is going to improve the patient, reduce the burden of disease, so there is a huge economic impact. In addition, in accordance to following the vision of our leadership and with the vision of 2030 for the health sector specific, we need to ensure that we provide the, the proper supporting foundation for the medical industries, for the medical innovation. And that is also a big advantage for us to enable and to encourage investment in healthcare. All of this is wherever you look at it, it's a win-win-win situation. We definitely should think in a very innovative way. So if we want to solve challenges, we need to have a creative approach into solving those challenges. Um, definitely, healthcare challenges may or may not come from the healthcare field. We have to look outside the healthcare field. We look at innovators from engineering, from IT, from art, from, from different modalities. Innovation can come from anyone regardless of the background and regardless of the age. I was really very proud of the 13 years old girl that was there showing her innovation and telling me that, yes, we are going to improve healthcare. 13 years old, no PhD here. She is an innovator. So it's just, we, we have taken the step to disrupt the, the conventional way of dealing with our healthcare challenges. And today is the first step. And inshallah, we are going to have, inshallah, further steps, solid steps, in order to enable and encourage our inventors. Thank you, Doctor. Yes, it's the first step, but we have a long journey to go. Uh, Ahmad will talk about that. So I don't think it was easy to have uh, innovation. I can hear the briefest panel talking about Innovation is not that easy. It's costly. Can you tell us about the, some of the challenges that are you, uh, you are facing or you faced when you come with this uh, high doc application? Well, the, the whole point behind innovating is it, you don't innovate from step one, right? It's, it's not you're going to build something and it's boom, you solve the solution, you solve the problem. It, it's, a, it's a process. Um, for, it's, it's about validating ideas, making sure that people actually want to use it. Um, you're actually solving the problem. The whole point behind innovation is solving. It's a brilliant idea to solve a problem. So for us, is we noticed a certain problem, and then we started working on it. Um, and it, uh, of course, there was tons of challenges. It, for starting from the technical, um, we wanted to build a secure private platform that can connect people all over the world without people worrying about their own data, because this is uh, really crucial. Um, and it's your health, and it's, it's not, uh, there's no joke. It's not something where if you make a mistake, it's all right. Um, so we needed to make sure that we built something that was extremely solid. Um, th that was a challenge by itself. Um, understanding rules and regulations, again, because we're global, um, we need to match regulations and we need to make sure that we're not breaking any laws anywhere in the world. So we need to make sure that we are following all 
um, all regulations across the world um, and to be compliant with most of, the, most of them or all of them. So that was a challenge by itself. Understanding what people want is another huge challenge. Um, we had so many assumptions that once, and once we, we launched our pilot, we realized half of them we needed to you know, revamp and the other half needed to be fixed. Um, so that was, was another uh, challenge. And um, it's, it's an ongoing challenge, basically. If it's not a challenge, then it's, it's anybody, not fun. Anybody can do it, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> Um, and we just chose to do it. And, and the beauty of, of innovations we're seeing today and all these sort of revolutions ac across different industries is they're coming from consumers. It's, uh, uh, Uber wasn't created by a taxi driver. Airbnb was not created by hoteliers. They were created by consumers, people that were using the service and tried to find ways to make it better because they want to make their lives better. Um, and we're seeing that across the board, across everything. Um, and it's just making sure that you listen to, to, to your audience and you, you, you solve a problem. And once you're able to solve that problem, you are on, on that path. It's not only about solving the problem. It's about communicating with the direct uh, or the correct uh, stakeholders. So when you're uh, talking about high doc, you have patients, you have healthcare, you have IT people, uh, you have... Um, I don't know, uh, business people to evaluate your application. I know you're going to have a startup and then, oh, I need to build the right business model. Oh, I don't have that skills, right? Yeah. So it's about communication. It's about learning. Can you, can you just describe some of these things? In the right. So there are so many uh, touch points, let's call them, across, um, across the different entities that we deal with. So it, the, the product itself needs to be built, right? And it needs to touch the, the deliver the, the, the whatever service we're trying to deliver in the right way to the right people. Um, you've got entities that you partner with um, because you need to deliver that solution through either businesses or you need to comply with governments or you partner with hospitals. So there are different um, sort of stakeholders that you work with. Um, and you've got the patients themselves and making sure that you deliver things to them the right way. Um, and our goal is to build uh, a, an, an integrated wellness sort of platform. Step one, as part of our, what we call it, the master plan, is the communication, because that's, that's where you start. But we've seen throughout the day, like talks about different innovations, um, or sort of, we've seen evolution in, in different uh, areas in, in healthcare. Um, and we've seen it evolve from sort of service product, and today we're at the stage of on-demand care, and the future is robotics and AI. Um, so the way we see it is all of the stuff that's happening today is happening in silos. So you see a lot of beautiful products that can come in and solve uh, um, problems via wearables. Um, there's a few weeks ago, I saw an article about a, a latest wearable that's come out that can help monitor stroke patients and take this data and streamline it um, vital data, streamline it to the doctor that can sort of get notified when something wrong happens. And all of that's happening across different types of solutions. Um, we need patient profiles. We need their data, which they own and they need to access, be able to centralize in one private place. So all that patient's data, um, which is available across different hospitals and across different places, nobody can reach it, nobody can access it. The goal is to integrate and have it all in one place. You've got machine learning and AI that can take in sort of all this data, understand it, make sense out of it, because the doctor is going to be overwhelmed with thousands of sort of data coming in from thousands of patients. So we need to be able to structure it, understand it, process it, and then streamline it again to the doctor, monitor the patient, make sure that we're sending them you know, tips, reminders, understanding what's going on with them, and then notify the doctor again when something wrong happens. So this is the kind of integrated platform that we see. All the different points are being innovated, what we would like to see is a, a platform that connects them all together. And this is one of the things we're working on um, and we're trying to achieve, which is, I guess, the biggest challenge. Um, and this, for us, it's, it's the future of, of healthcare. Interesting. Uh, one of the things I noticed uh, today that we have a lot of young people who are trying to uh, do startups, uh, uh, create a technical solution. I'd like to ask Dr. Ali, how, what, how do you vision the roles of the role of the universities and uh, 
educational institute. As far as I know, you are you are the faculty member. You are a director for Abu Dhabi Polytechnic. So how how you how you define or uh, redefine the role of uh, educational uh, institution and uh, helping this pioneer uh, in terms of uh, start doing the startups or even in t and technical from technical perspective. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Shoki. It is um, it is funny that uh, we are uh, maybe. Um, um, I always saying this, and, and I think it is true, that we are thinking on behalf of these young people who are coming from schools, and after a few years from now, they will be shocked that in the university that we are preparing so many things at the, at the university level or the changing the environment itself at the university level or, for example, at the colleges, and then after a few years, they are coming and say, what is this? We don't want, we don't want that. Who told you we want this? Yeah, and for example, we are trying our best to uh, make our classes or our courses virtual. So this, uh, the student himself is staying at home, never left his bed, and he finished his courses and curriculum. And we are thinking to do that, and we are thinking heavily on that. We are investing heavily. Um, and the other thing is the government. Government is helping us a lot towards, uh, or towards achieving this or achieving this. A few years back, if you remember, no one were talking about innovation. A few people talking about innovation and very uh, smart people, I would say. Now, almost everyone, everyone, and if you, if you want to see the change that happened, go to Think Science. That's only one competition that you need to see, and you will feel that things are changed, and the game is changed. And the people who are coming from schools are not the people we were used to be. So they are thinking differently, and they, they believe in, on things differently. So what we are trying, we are trying our best to, to understand what they need. So I think, I think one of the um, ways to, uh, for, the, for, the, for the change in education, we have to sit with them. To have, uh, we have to engage them, what we are thinking, what we believe that this is the future. And we have to listen to them that exactly this is what we need. It is, it is not anymore. In 2009 or 2010, I used to uh, teach um, uh, YouTube uh, courses. Nowadays, say, after two hours of talking, sir, yes, this is in YouTube. Why you just not let me go do something else and then I will see it at night? So the people who are coming from schools are really totally different. That's the other thing. The other thing is um, I am part of the, of the global councils um, with the World Economic Forum. And we had the second meeting in Dubai la last year. And we have a um, um, meeting every year. Uh, we had um, a survey, and we asked them, do you know enhancement? Just, just like a question, just to throw it to the people. Uh, you have different populations or different samples from different populations, some of them up to 18 years, and some of them up to 40 years. Uh, uh, the, in between 30 and 40, 70% they don't understand what enhancement. Whereas the below 18, um, it was around 90, that figure, they know what is enhancement. And then the second question was, uh, if I remember it correctly, do you want to be enhanced? 30% uh, of the people who has been in between 30 and 40, they just don't want it. Even they don't want what is enhancement. And they said, we don't want what is it, and we don't want it. Whereas the, uh, the below 18, 90% they want to be enhanced. And the third question, which was the funny question, what do you want in your body to be enhanced? Uh, up to 18 years, they wanted to become Superman. They want to become Batman. And they want to become something totally different than what they are thinking. They want to claim the, 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 the walls by their hands and hand hands. So the people are coming from school totally different now. And we have to be on into that level. Um, uh, the last thing I would say, um, what we are doing now in schools and what we are doing in, um, in the universities, it's based from 200 back or 200 years back. It's exactly what we are doing to 100, 100 years back. And exactly what we are going to do after a few years from now. It is, it is different. It becomes different. People nowadays, one minute you talk to your kid, one minute, dad, halas, one minute is done. What do you want? Tell me the, 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 the outcome. Outcomes based uh, curriculum is become it's become an old fashioned now. Uh, we have to invent um, some kind of um, 
a teaching which you will uh, gain um, the benefit of what schools or what these kids are invested in themselves. Um, uh, for example, I don't know, but maybe, maybe distant learning, it becomes very old fashioned now. It's, it's, it becomes very old fashioned. And we still insist to teach those people with the old fashioned way of teaching. There are, there are uh, lots of debate now um, in the world about, about a new or a visionary way of teaching. I'm very sure um, it will become um, a default within upcoming a few years. But um, in Polytechnic in Abu Dhabi, we have a pilot courses and pilot curriculum, which is taking the student away from coming to the class. It is based on self-study kind of learning. Go home, do things, and then even the exams, it will be different. I cannot um, talk about it more because it's kind of, uh, it's a pilot study at um, Polytechnic Abu Dhabi, but you will see it soon, um, maybe in the media, I don't know. Yes. So, Dr. Ali, so uh, there is a need for a reform in the way we teach, because there will be, as the discussion goes before, that uh, jobs are going to disappear, uh, we're going to focus on skills. So, there is a need of a reform in some way, in the way we deliver the information in the way we teach uh, our students, in the way I think uh, define what's, what's actually needed. Yeah. Uh, um, again, um, I, uh, maybe I always talk about uh, Polytechnic Abu Dhabi because I love, I become a fan of Abu Dhabi Polytechnic now. I joined Abu Dhabi Polytechnic class here in, in, in August and uh, I always uh, thought that UAE University is, um, is nothing in the world like her because I've been so many places and I've seen, I've seen and I, I really love UAE, you uh, teaching way and the disciplines that they are teaching. But what I like in, in Polytechnic Abu Dhabi, what is different from different universities, that the um, um, students are graduating with two different things. It is not just a theory-based courses and you are okay but the certifications that they are getting, the professional work, uh, the, the facilities that they are, or the machinery that they are skilled to work with, this will help them to shorten the period uh, when, they, when they join the industry by three years or three or four years. The certifications become very important. Um, the skills that, if you remember last year, or, or even a few, a, few, a few weeks back, immerse the skills, yes. the competition, when you go there and you see the people and the, and the students that are working, um, skillful things that is, in a few years back, you don't, you don't think that Emiratis would do it. And the Emirates skills and, and, and again, the world skills, uh, you really feel that um, the people or the students who are coming to, to our universities, they are, they are different. They are skilled people. And the, the thing that we, we really need to enhance our students with is the skills using these machineries and, and, and the creativity of this and using, and using different machines as well, because to become ready for the industry. That's, if, we, if we reduce that gap by three years, you are reducing a bunch of money uh, and you are saving uh, very fortune for the, for the government for these three years. And the industry wants someone, someone ready. So skillful and skills is very important now. Thank you, Dr. Ali. Uh, Dr. Farida, uh, I know that you are uh, one of the people who like to do research. And uh, usually you try these days to gear our research toward innovation. Uh, can you tell us about uh, the relationship between innovation, research, and in the healthcare? Um, well, I think uh, there is a very strong relationship between innovation and research. Uh, and fortunately, I have uh, like both degrees, the academic and the uh, innovation degrees. Uh, but I think it's not only about that. Yes, innovation is about coming with new ideas. But research is about testing the ideas, how effective they are. And in the healthcare, uh, when we are talking about uh, innovative ideas, it's really impacting people's lives. Uh, 
So I think it's very important that we here in Abu Dhabi and in UAE strengthen our research background and infrastructure. Uh, previously, in the previous years, we used to import a lot of inventions that are well tested, certified, and they passed third, uh, second and third stage of research. Now we would like to flip the game. And we want to be kind of the uh, innovators and the source of innovation for the world. So you want to be a change maker? Yes, for sure. If we would, uh, we, this is the vision that we have in the healthcare. So to flip the game, you need to really uh, uh, focus on the research as the next steps so that when you uh, uh, attract the in innovators and inventors to come to Abu Dhabi, it's not about only showcasing their inventions, but we need to take them steps forward towards testing those ideas, making uh, and studying what is the impact of those ideas on people's lives. So that when we select, we select the most effective and useful solutions for our patients. This is one thing. The other thing I think we need also to be very focused these days, uh, more than we ever been, because again, Disruptive innovations is, will make a lot of chiasses, but again, we would like to have the disruptive innovations that can help to reach our goals. Yes, uh, we still have the goals that are very well set. So what we need to do is to drive the innovations that uh, solve the challenges of today's. The third thing is we need research, basically because our challenges might be different than the challenges in other countries. So we need here to attract innovations that solve our local challenges and also inspire the others on how to solve those problems. Therefore, I think it's very important that we work in a very close collaboration between an innovation and we take those innovations into the second step of research to identify how effective those solutions are or those ideas are and take the most effective ones. So here um, we are very lucky to have a very inspiring management, empowering management, and they have the, uh, really um, the vision to empower both research and innovations to take them forward uh, because this is where we are heading in the future. This is tomorrow. Uh, you want to bring tomorrow today? That's interesting. So, uh, so we're going to talk to the director. What do you think about that? So you are the regulator, you are the director, and... Uh, I'm representing. <laughs> yeah, you are representing, but uh, in this panel, you are the boss. Oh, that's a huge responsibility. And we trust that you can Inshallah. do it. Inshallah. Um, I would like just to spend a few seconds just to reiterate the point that uh, Dr. Ali mentioned about, you know, the difference between the generation, the generation that is, um, that we live and the generation that is coming and the generation, inshallah, to be. Um, I'll give you a short story. A few weeks back, my seven years old daughter asked me, mom, why can't I fly? I want to be like a fairy. I just want, and I said, oh my God, she's a dreamer. And I said, because we are created like this way. He's, she said, I don't want to fly like an airplane, just like few meters. And I said, oh, she's a dreamer. Mm -hmm. After that, I went with the team to Hanover Messi. And uh, I was going around the, you know, halls. And I was surprised to see a human-sized bat flying using artificial intelligence, exactly as what my daughter wanted, few meters high, and it was amazing. I, I came to the team and I said, I'm puzzled of what is there. This is the industry. It's not, Hanover Messi is not a medical conference. It's a pure industrial uh, exhibition, international exhibition. But the potential of the applications that we saw there for healthcare was phenomenal. Robotic. So they were just putting robotics to help in the houseway. And I was thinking, oh my God, this is, you know, home care. This is for treating, you know, and supporting long-term patients. And so the potential is a huge and it is available. We are not talking about dreams. It is available, not a prototype, it's in a production. 
So where are we? We have to move from our comfort zone. In addition to the medical conferences that we attend, please let's go see what others are doing and think of those innovation and what is the potential that can improve the quality of care and help achieve our target, improve the healthcare, reduce the cost, provide better access. So from, from those potentials, you know, disruptive way of solving our healthcare challenges, this is what we are doing here today. We should not stick into a single route of solving problems with a pill or with, with another you know, diagnostic conventional method. This is what we are trying to do. And today, we will do all our utmost possibility to ensure we pave the way from a regulations perspective that we need to adapt those innovation in Abu Dhabi, in the UAE, and making sure that those innovations are effective, safe, and cost effective. So from that is uh, our duty. Enable innovators, link them with investors, and making sure that the regulatory framework to ensure those innovations are adapted, this is our role, inshallah. I think um, for the human enhancement, um, there are two, uh, maybe two different, uh, two different, two different interpretation for it. Uh, for for people who are going for LASIK to uh, enhance their vision and they don't like their glasses, and they are happy with it, and they say, and then even they pay uh, fourteen thousand, fifteen thousand to enhance their vision. But if you want to see something into microscopic level, oh wow, don't do it. No, this is ethically unacceptable, and so on. It is there. You like it, you don't like it. The question is. Do we enhance the human by genome editing or afterwards? That's the only question that is happening now. You like it or you don't? It is there, unfortunately. <laughs> it's an exciting discussion. Uh, I'd like to receive some questions from the audience to the entrepreneurs, to the pioneers here. Not to the physicians, just to the pioneers. So, pioneers, pioneers, pioneers. Always we got, they're going to be there. They're going to change everything they, because they see it in a different way. I just have one more question for the panel. Very simple question. What's next? Um, we used to say, um, we used to say in, in um, in, um, in Arabic that, or I, I will try to translate it. I'm not very, I'm not very good in translations, but I will, I will do my best. Um, don't, um, don't, um, don't teach me how to, uh, don't, don't, fish for, don't fish for me, but uh, teach me how to fish. That is no longer valid. It's not teach me how to fish, it's teach me how to sell my fish. It's, if you are going to fish, but you cannot sell it, so commercialization is very important, Dr. Dr. Shawqi. Um, the next step with uh, with the entrepreneurs um, with you, uh, with you, with then with, with you, <laughs> with your product. So you have the invention and everything. We want to. What, yeah, what commercialization, 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 commercialization. Because if you want uh, economy based on innovation, it is the the pillar that you need to stand on. It's a commercialization. Um, Luckily, UAE University did, I think, seven or eight commercialization product, maybe Khalifa one or others. But the next step, I think, is commercialization. Every university, every pioneer, if they be able to sell their product or their invention, I think this is, this is the buyout, what Abu Dhabi 2030 vision is. Okay, thank you. Dr. Farida? Uh, what's next for innovation? I think uh, we still need to embed the culture of innovation into our day-to-day -day, uh, operations, wherever we are. So as a physicians, as engineers, as ITs, it's about the way of thinking. Innovation is a lifestyle, and this is different from the invention. Invention is the outcome. 
so I think in our culture, especially in the healthcare sector, still we are having a lot of the traditional way of thinking and working. So we need to embed the culture of innovation, um, uh, solving our, uh, our problems and challenges uh, in an innovative way uh, of thinking. The other part is I think we have to do a lot in terms of research and infrastructure building in UAE. So I would love to work on this field uh, in the future and empowering uh, and linking between innovation and research. Hi, Doc. What next for you? Ah, so many things. Um, where to start? So first of all, our number one goal now is growth. So basically growing and growing to you know, reach as many markets as we can and to build awareness as much as we can. Um, our goal is for Haydoc to be in every person's pocket um, as a, not just a, a, com a health communications platform, but also as an integrated, unique, connected platform that we talked about this wellness sort of um, uh, engagement. Um, in addition to that, we are, um, we're working and trying to establish uh, partnerships with the different entities. Um, for example, we'd love to work with, uh, with the government on, on the new regulations that are coming out when it comes to health tech and telemedicine and all of that. And we would love to be part of it and, and see how we can add value and at the same time sort of help be part of this growth that's happening um, in, in health innovation over here. Um, and lastly is we're also working on an initi initiative that's dear to our hearts. It's called Salamtak, which means wish you good health in Arabic. Uh, Salamtak. So we believe in this, in that those who can pay, who, those who can afford to pay for it will, but those who can't won't have to. Um, so if you can access, if you can afford to pay for healthcare, you can use um, HeyDoc or you can go see a doctor. But those who can't, uh, we're offering them this platform where people in developing countries, rural areas, and refugee camps can all get free access to their basic right, which is which is their healthcare. Um, and we're also working on establishing partnerships with different NGOs, governments, foundations, um, so we can run pilot projects across um, rural India, uh, camps in uh, Jordan and Lebanon, um, areas in Africa. Some places in Africa, you've got 14 doctors for, for a million people. It's, it's really insane, um, uh, and, and there's so much that we can do with all of this amazing innovation that we're talking about. Um, let's go, you know, uh, make, put it to use. Um, so this is one of the things that we're, we're sort of very excited about. Dr. Asma, you are the pioneer of adapting tips. Inshallah. So what next? Yes. Um, actually, we know exactly what is coming next. So stay tuned. Uh, we are going to announce the challenges very soon for the tip 2019. And uh, we, inshallah, look forward for your participation. Um, specifically, I will reiterate uh, the D Department of Health, and His Excellency Under Secretary, uh, discussion. He mentioned that we do have a wealth of data that we would like to invite innovators to utilize the wealth of healthcare data for the overall benefits of the patient. So what, you, what uh, you were trying or dreaming or thinking, it is happening. And those are years of data that we would like the researchers, the innovators, to help us solve our crucial top priority healthcare problems and utilize this for the overall benefit. So, we are enabling, we have a focus, we have a challenge, and we'll do all our best to support the inventors and the innovation in order to solve our problems. Stay tuned. I don't want to give a lot of, you know, uh, media news. I prefer that it is, you know, structured in a different, uh, in, in a, a structural manner. But what I can announce that, you know, it, what we are going to uh, announce Next, in the couple of uh, weeks' time, are the challenges for TIP 2019. I would like also to highlight that all those 1,200 applications are going to be re-reviewed, re, um, let's say, um, not reassessed, but we are going to help every single applicant 
to take his innovation to the next level. Every application is a pressure to us, a precious to us. And we would like to ensure that we take it to the next step. We are, your you know, success is our success. So this is a promise. And inshallah, we are going to communicate directly with those 1,200 application to help them move to the next step. And inshallah, maybe we'll see them in the next round. Inshallah, we'll see everybody, inshallah. I'd like to thank the panel, and I want uh, all of us to thank them. Give them a applause, a round of applause. Thank you.